Okay, here we are in my basement looking at my plow truck. Um, I've had some persistent annoying problems with this plow truck uh, related to the electrical system in that the battery dies constantly. Um, I can't go probably more than a week, but we're going to actually figure that out for real, how long I can go, and then we're going to hopefully solve the problem. So, what kills the battery? It's not voltage. It's not resistance. Rather, it's the current flow. Right? The battery will have the same voltage at all times, 12 volts, until it's dead, and then it will go increasingly less than that. But the resistance of the circuit uh, should be, when everything is off, there should be an infinite resistance, right? No current can flow through. So we're going to measure the current going through this bat or go leaving this battery going through the truck system when the key is off and everything is off. So right now I have no lights, nothing on, and I'm going to show you what happens. So right now the battery is disconnected, and the important thing to remember about measuring amps is the only way to do it, the only way to measure current and measuring amps is to go through the ammeter. So we have to do this in series. Right now I've got it disconnected. I've just got the lead laying here. But you can see I have my main battery post disconnected. And I have these little jumper leads. One here on the post and one on the main going to the truck. And when I hook this up, I'm going to turn it on to 10 amp setting. And you'll see I have 1.19 amps. That's a lot. For everything being off but wait there's more because right now I've just hooked everything back up and it everything energizes so the computer memory came on um, and so on you're gonna see this drop in just a second uh, there it goes so now we're down to 0.22 and 0.22 amps means we have 200 milliamps so to get a little bit more accurate reading I'm gonna switch this over to the milliamp scale and you'll see here that I have 160 roughly milliamps so we can even round that up to 200 milliamps or 0.2 it's pretty close to 0.2 and that's with everything off and the truck is just sitting here with nothing nothing on that's a lot in fact let's figure out how long this would last we know this battery is good. It's only a year old. It's an 819 battery, which means it was made in August of 2019. So it's not very old. It has a um, characteristic of 24. Uh, they call it a 24M7 because this is actually a marine battery. Many of you know I work at the marina. Um, it has a cranking amp rating of 1,000 cranking amps and a cold cranking amp rating of 800 amps. So that's the maximum capacity of this battery. You have to dig a little deeper to get the information we want. I want to know what is the res or the amp hour capacity of this, which means this is what it can put out all in one shot. That is important for starting the engine, but it's not so important for what we're doing now, figuring out how this roughly point, uh, 2 amp draw is affecting us. We need to know... What is the amp hour capacity? So I have that over here. It is a 54 amp hour capacity battery, which means that at a current of one amp, this battery will last 54 hours. Well, that doesn't tell us too much until we factor in a little bit of math. So to do that, we know right now that I have a 0.2 amp draw so that's how much current is flowing out of the battery right now so if the battery was fully charged how long would it last well it's pretty simple to figure out all we have to do this is our draw or drain some may call it that's how fast we're draining we're draining at a rate of 0.2 amps so if I have 54 hours at 1 amp, I can figure out how many hours I'm going to get at 0.2 by just dividing. So 54 is the capacity divided by 0.2, and that is going to give us, it looks like a negative, 
0.2, and that's going to give us a rating of 270 hours. Well, that still doesn't tell us too much. Theoretically, how long is that? We don't really know. But we can figure that out by just simply taking 270 hours and dividing it by 24, because there's 24 hours in a day, and that will give us how many days it will last. And that means we are going to get 11.25 days out of this. Now, in my experience, practically, this really doesn't last more than a week, but that's probably due to temperature variations and things like that. This is when they do these tests on batteries, this is perfect conditions in a laboratory where they have the battery at exactly room temperature all the time, not out in the freezing cold in the middle of winter. So that is very simply how you can calculate how long your battery will last based on the amount of draw or drain in amperage that you have. Okay, well now how do we fix it? So it's actually quite simple. I'm just going to go along and pull all of these little fuses until I find the one that makes this meter go to either zero or uh, to an acceptable level, which I would say for this would be somewhere around 50 milliamps. Because at a rate of 50 milliamps, well, let's go back over here. At 50 milliamps, that would be, instead of 0.2, we would do 0 0.05. So 54 divided by 0 0.05 would give us 1,080 hours, which when you divide that by 24, means we would have 45 days. A much better day range than 11.25. So that's what we're shooting for. But I need to start pulling fuses and find which circuit is the problem. I'll be back with more after I've figured out which one it is. And the cat is not helping me pull fuses, but rather playing with the wires. Hopefully it stops that. So all I'm doing is I'm just going through and I'll start with this one. And I look at the meter, nothing happens. So I can put that one back. That's safe. What we're doing by disconnecting all of these fuses is simply... disconnecting like you would with a switch, right? I'm By disconnecting each fuse, I'm turning that circuit off. And so far, I haven't found any, and there's a lot to go, so stay tuned. Okay, fortunately it didn't take very long. This fuse right here, watch what happens. I pull this fuse out, and I end up with 3.4 milliamps. That is going to make this battery last a lot longer. But we're not done yet, because all we know now is that that fuse is where our problem is. As soon as I plug it back in, we're back up. So I go to my reference chart that comes with the truck, and I find that that one is SEOB1, 15 amp. And that is, in fact, a 15 amp. So now I need to figure out what SEO B1 means. Be back in a second with that. And we're back with my mildly mouse devoured service or uh, owner's manual. And uh, you can see the index and table of contents is basically useless. So I had to do a little digging, but I did eventually find SEO B1. Mid-bust electrical center, rear heated seats, universal home remote system. I know I don't have rear heated seats. It's a work truck. I know I don't have a universal home remote system. It's got crank windows. But mid-bust electrical center concerns me. So I'm going to dig a little deeper on that and I'll get back to you in a minute. I've jumped the wires to the fuse. And through a series of experimentation with touching these leads together, I have determined, sorry, that there's this little relay hidden. Now, you didn't see me take apart all the stuff back here, but 
there's a little relay hidden you can hear it clicking behind the seat behind that panel which also meant removing this whole panel and I have found it so that relay is constantly being energized so I have found <coughs> the source of this relays uh, voltage or current or circuit if I connect these terminals I'm going to see a voltage on this but let's trace these wires back these go to a random assortment of wires that basically comes out of the roof and I imagine this was at one time a truck that was used for commercial plowing so it probably had on the roof a set of uh, recirculating lights you know or amber flashers and if i jump the terminals that i was using before you hear the relay click and i have roughly 12 volts at these terminals which were just stuffed up in that roof panel and they are controlled by this relay so based on what i know now this relay is my current draw that relay is constantly on regardless of what the key is doing and it's always providing 11.93 volts. This system here is connected to the fuse location that I was pulling out earlier. So all I'm doing when I connect these two is the same thing as when I put the fuse in. And when I have them connected, I have 11.93 volts disconnected I have zero so ultimately this is why it was so challenging to find this because this truck had had a relay system installed for an overhead light that is no longer in use but the relay is still active so all I have to do is disconnect that relay and all of my little troubles should go away. I'll come back with the results of that. Okay, the fuse is hooked back up. The relay that was suspect has been disconnected. And finally, the ammeter has been hooked back into the circuit. And now we're showing on the 200 milliamp scale, 3.3 milliamps. So if you remember before, this was in the high hundreds or close to 200 milliamps and so let's review 200 milliamps would be 0.2 amps that's our draw or drain so at 54 hour or 54 amp hour capacity that would mean we would have 270 hours or 11.25 days i had said in the beginning of this video i would be satisfied with a 50 milliamp so 0 0.05 as we have down here 54 divided by 0 0.05 would give us 1,080 hours. Divide that by 24 hours in a day. That would give us 45 days. I now have 0 0.003 amps. If we take 54 amp hours, the capacity of the battery, and divide that by 0 0.003 amps, we're going to end up with 18,000 hours which when we divide 18,000 hours by 24 hours in a day, we're gonna end up with 750 days. 750 days without a dead battery is a number I can live with.